is at the end of the world and right there in the center of the book of Revelation we have this beautiful scene of three dynamic messages, two groups of people and Jesus coming back again. Jesus says that the harvest is at the end of the world and that the reapers are the angels. Now tonight we want to take this a step further because we want to find out exactly how the world is going to end, right? That's why you're here tonight. And we discussed that a little bit last night, but tonight we're going to find out exactly how the world is going to end. But remember, we're setting no dates for the end of the world, okay? We're not setting any dates because Jesus in Matthew 24 has warned us against that. We're also going to find out exactly where we are at tonight on God's prophetic timeline. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking to yourself, you know, Steve, I'm not so sure I want to know where we're at. And there are others of you sitting there right now saying, I need to know. I need to know. And what I have found, ladies and gentlemen, that as you spend time with the Bible and the Holy Spirit enlightens your mind through His divine power, we receive great confidence and hope because we know what the future is holding for us. You see, the Bible projects what's going to happen in the future. And so we can have great confidence to know what is going to happen. I want to know, don't you? So hang on, because we're going to shift gears, and we're going to go to Matthew 24 and verse 15, and we're going to listen to some interesting words that Jesus had to say. By the way, Matthew 24 is basically built off of the book of Daniel. It's Jesus Christ presenting to us end time events based off of the theology of the book of Daniel. Now, notice what Jesus has to say about the book of Daniel. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, some of you are wondering, what is this abomination of desolation? We're going to cover that in these meetings. You're going to know what the abomination of desolation is. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the what, ladies and gentlemen? Prophet. Standing in the holy place. Notice what else it says. Whoever reads, let him what? Understand. You find that word understand a lot in the book of Daniel. Now this is interesting. Jesus himself calls Daniel a prophet. Jesus is recommending to us tonight a study of the book of Daniel. Now, I know that we have based this series of meetings on the book of Revelation, but Daniel holds the golden key that unlocks the mysteries to the book of Revelation. So what we need to do is become acquainted tonight with the book of Daniel, because Monday night we're going to see how Revelation 13 and Daniel 7 fit together like a hand and glove. I want you to have great confidence in the book of Daniel. And I know some of you are thinking, Steve, that is in the Old Testament, and we're New Testament Christians. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to understand end-time prophecy, you must have the book of Daniel. You must have the book of Daniel. So let's go to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 1. You've already studied a little bit about it in your lesson. We find that the greatest king of that time has a dream, and in that dream, God reveals to him the future. Let's begin in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 1. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians and the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and they stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. How many of you have ever had a dream you wake up the next day and you don't remember it? Let me see your hands. How many of you were at Pizza Hut at midnight when you, uh, before you had the dream? Keep 
King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and his heart is troubled. You see, God is trying to save this man. He's trying to bring truth and light to him. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will give the interpretation. I'm going to be good, Rob. The Chaldeans were the politicians. They were the silver-tongued politicians of that day. And you notice they do all the speaking. And so they say, hey, listen, king, if you will just simply tell us a dream, we can tell you the interpretation. How does the king respond? The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, and it's what? Interpretation. You shall be cut in pieces, and your house shall be made an ash heap. How would you like to have a boss like that? How many of you have a boss like that? Yeah, don't, don't raise your hands. Oh, I saw some hands. That would be a rough person to work for. You make a mistake and you lose your head. Now we have to understand that Daniel and his friends have also been brought into the realm of being wise men. And when the word went forth that all of the wise men were going to lose their head, Daniel begins to pray. Now notice, so Daniel went in and he asked the king to give him what? Time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, so Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now, if you read the whole chapter, you find that Daniel and his friends, they knelt down and they began to talk to the God of heaven. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, God does hear prayer. And many of us would feel very, very blessed if we could go and talk to some political leader. But each and every day, we can bow down before the God of the universe and connect with Him and talk with Him. And I know from experience that He listens. And guess what? You don't have to use big words. I don't know a bunch of big words. And you don't have to use the these and the vows either. You just simply talk to him as though you're talking to a friend. You communicate with him. That's what Daniel and his friends did. And then the Bible goes on to say in Daniel 2 and verse 21, and he, God, changes the times and the seasons. Now, notice very carefully, we have elections coming up, don't we? We do. I, told, I promised you I would not get political, remember? But notice, he removes kings and he raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have what? Understanding. So the Bible says that he sets up kings and he takes down kings. Now here's a little biblical principle for you. Many times in the Old Testament, God allowed them to have a king that reflected their character. God is in control of everything that's going on in this planet and on this planet. The Bible goes on to say he reveals deep and secret things. Do you want to know deep and secret things, ladies and gentlemen? Spend time in the Bible. Allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. That's where the deep and secret things are. They're in the Word of God. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. God knows the future. Now let's notice the message that God gives to the king through Daniel. Daniel goes in before the king in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 26. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, are you, now notice what he says, are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Now notice how Daniel answers. Daniel answers in the presence.